Welcome to Hawaii is my mainland on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Kaui Lucas. Today's show is Honolulu's bag ban bill, trick or truth. We're going to discuss whether the Honolulu City Council has a chance to redeem itself next Wednesday, June 7th, 2017, by passing Bill 59, CD2, FD2 from 2016 to really ban single-use plastic bags. If you want to ask a question or participate in the discussion, tweet us at ThinkTechHI or call us at 415-871-2474. Our guests for the show are Suzanne Fraser and Dean Otsuki, co-founders of Beach Environmental Awareness Campaign Hawaii, or B-E-A-C-H. Welcome to Hawaii is my mainland, Dean and Suzanne. Well, thanks Thank for you. having us on the show. Well, this has been a, for this particular bill, it's in its sixth uh, form, its sixth iteration over two years. It's been through more machinations than uh, is believable, actually. There have been so many, uh, listening to you uh, give the history of this yesterday, mm -hmm. Suzanne, it's stunning. It's really mm -hmm. astonishing. Um, how underhanded <laughs> um, politics can be in this town over something like plastic bags. No. Yes, yeah, a, a simple ban. So where are we right now in this moment? Right now in this moment, we're a few days away from the final, final hearing of Bill 59 at the City Council. And there's now two... Um, versions on the bill. Um, one is uh, a floor draft one, and that version will actually put fees on all plastic and paper bags. It will ban compostable bags in 2018, but it won't go any further than just um, mostly a fee bill. Okay. Um, the other one that's actually on the agenda for next Wednesday, a proposed floor draft two of the bill, um, that one's a much better version because it will actually do the fees on paper and plastic. It will ban the compostables in 2018, but it takes that extra step that's really needed, which is going to ban the thick plastic bags. So those are the bags like this one from um, Don Quixote that were made thicker. <laughs> so about two years ago when there was supposed to be a plastic bag ban. I remember. What really happened was a plastic bag switch. So basically this store switched from a thin yellow plastic bag to now a thick yellow plastic bag, um, meaning that's a great big loophole in the law. So that's why we're actually supporting the floor draft two proposed by Brandon Elefonte because it'll get the job done of close at least two of the loopholes in the current law. Okay, so let's um, talk about the, the um, actual legislators involved in this, because that, that makes it clearer for everybody, and they, we want to know who's, who, who wants what and, and mm -hmm. uh, what people can do about it ultimately before mm -hmm. next Wednesday to help this actually go through. Right. We right. really it's, need it to pass. It's, it's appalling that Honolulu yeah. is the only county in Hawaii that doesn't have this. That's right. I mean, we have the most loopholes in our law, which has caused a failure of any sort of a ban to take place on this island. As I said, it's a switch, not a ban at the moment. Okay, so the committee that this is in is in the... What, who's hearing this and, and when? Do we know any of the specifics? Well, it's the, um, the committee is a, I don't know exactly the name of the committee, but it's the, you know what it is? Public the, Works and Sustainability right. Committee, and the chair of that committee is Carol Fukunaga. And she's the one that um, is pushing for the FD1. FD1, and that's the one that does not include these thick plastic bags or the This is the one that's, it's the fee bill, where it's, it's, they're it, going to mandate businesses to charge 10 cents or more for a, a plastic or a paper bag. Instead of doing a ban. Right. Instead of doing a ban. Right. Mm -hmm. But didn't you say that the, um, the Elefante bill, the FD2 two. Two two. Right. bill, mm -hmm. um, also charges a fee? Yeah, so he's, he's 
one also charges a fee, but he's going to sunset these thick plastic bags in 2020. So his bill takes an extra step to actually get rid of the bags. Wow, so just 2020. Yeah, yeah, they wanted to give the stores plenty of time to get rid of their stock, although three years seems a bit excessive. But no one can complain. Like, really? Okay. Um, Brandon Elefonte's version of the bill is a good win-win um, all around because it'll give the stores what they want. Apparently, some stores want to charge for paper and plastic bags, so they will still have a charge on paper bags after 2020, but there'll be no more plastic bags being handed And is out. that charge set, is the amount, or is it it's, up to the stores? It's a minimum 10-cent mm -hmm. charge. Okay. And many stores are already doing 10 cents on their bags, so it's really unnecessary in our view. And we did not support a fee bill. That was We were um, testifying against that all the way through the process because it goes to two committee hearings and three council hearings and excess other hearings if it gets held up. And, and all the way along until recently, there was nothing for us to cheer on, you know, because it was a fee bill instead of a ban. But luckily at the last council hearing, El Brandon Elefonte brought in another version of the bill, and that version does give us the ban that we've been seeking. However, um, you know, there's still going to be more work to be done, um, no matter which version passes, because the uh, additional loopholes allow these sorts of bags to be used for prepared food and drinks. So that is not going away. And neither are similar. So how is, that, how is that regulated, prepared food and drinks? If I go to Safeway and I go to their deli counter mm -hmm. and get something, mm -hmm. are they going to give me a bag like that? They would probably be allowed to give mm -hmm. you a bag like that, yes. OK. And then if you go to a farmer's market, you're likely to get one of these as well if you don't bring your own bag. So that's another loophole. These are called t-shirt bags. I'm not quite sure why, but I suppose they look like a t-shirt. <laughs> I don't know. But the trouble with these bags is that, um, I don't know if you've ever seen them when they're hanging up at the farmer's market, but they have a little piece at the top here. And when the farmers, at the, when they rip it down, the little piece of plastic ends up on the ground. So there's a whole lot of pieces of plastic on the ground, littered all over the ground at the end of a farmer's market, um, which is the right size to get eaten. So this is why we actually um, really want to see a ban on all plastic checkout bags, no matter how thick or thin. Um, all of the plastic checkout bags are unnecessary, wasteful, and harmful. So that's why we want to see um, a complete ban. Okay, and so the, the current, um, what's going to be heard on Wednesday, there's two versions of the bill, but are, mm -hmm. are they going to hear both versions? We hope so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're both on the agenda, which is the good news. Um, so we'll see what happens, I guess, on Wednesday. It's actually the day before World Ocean Day, so we're really hoping that... Oh, wouldn't um, that be fantastic? Yeah. Wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really would. And I was doing a little uh, research for this show um, and Googling around. I came across all of these articles saying, oh, Hawaii passed the bag ban you know, uh, back in 2012. Actually, like, load of uh, nonsense. <laughs> yeah, that's not even true. Like, no. It's like me saying, like, I'm going to go gluten-free and I'm going to switch from thin wheat noodles to thick wheat noodles. Have I gone gluten-free? <laughs> I mean, it's just as silly as that. Like, we yeah. switch from thin plastic bags to thick plastic bags. How is that a plastic bag ban? Yeah. Like, I just, I don't know. It's appalling. I, yeah. I can't believe that, um, that, that we've allowed this to, to persist. Now, mm. uh, speaking of bags and so forth, wait, we have a few, um, we have a few other things on the, on the, um, table here that maybe mm -hmm. need some explanation. Yeah. So Dean, Dean, would you like your so these, are, these are actually um, plastic bag knots. Okay, we find these at uh, cleanups along uh, all the beaches here in Hawaii. Um, these, this is what's left after um, marine life have eaten the rest of the uh, plastic bag. They can't eat the knots, so that's what these I are. I want to hold the black over. one and can see that right. better. So what, what ends up happening is that someone has tried the bag in a knot and the marine life have eaten off 
all the ends and sides of it and every piece of it and left just the knot remaining. So this is what washes up on our shorelines out of the Great Pacific garbage, garbage patch. So we hardly ever see the whole bag. Um, this is all that remains of the bag. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that's really bizarre. Mm. Um, and why are you wearing a glove, Dean? Well, <clears throat> what happens with plastic in the ocean is that uh, it, uh, it attracts these uh, chemicals called uh, POPs, or, or persistent organic pollutants, or POPs for short. Um, these are things like um, oil-based things like pesticides, DDT, PCBs, and dioxins, which are very toxic to everybody, really. Um, so when we're handling this, you always need to ha uh, use gloves, um, so it won't get on your hands. So what happens to plastic in the ocean is that it accumulates those pops mm -hmm. up to one million times more concentrated on the surface of the plastic than the surrounding seawater, meaning that plastic marine debris is toxic plastic because it, uh, it acts like a sponge and just soaks in all of these toxic chemicals. So you should never handle marine debris without a glove on. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of all the pounds of, of marine debris I've handled over the years. Yeah, so ah, it gets into okay. your skin, you know. Lovely. Yeah. It gets into your skin. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's why, you know, when you rub creams on your skin, it absorbs in. Sure. So um, really what these toxins do is they're endocrine disruptors. Mm -hmm. They act like a synthetic estrogen in your body. And they cause things like breast cancer, prostate cancer, diabetes and obesity and autoimmune diseases, a whole, lot, a whole range right. of things. So it's, it's very dangerous, this stuff. Well, <clears throat> in a strange way, though, the plastic is, is cleaning. It's in clean. a way, it's yes. Really yeah, if you, think if it, you can get it <laughs> out of there quick enough, yeah. But um, as you can, I don't know if you guys can zoom in on here at all. Can you see those little pieces that have broken down? Uh, oh, yeah, I think they can. Those little dots, they look, kind of look like dust. That's little pieces of plastic dust, mm -hmm. okay? And that's what happens all the time is that the plastic marine debris is so brittle, even though it's absorbing the pops, but it's also breaking down and photodegrading in the sun. So this stuff gets eaten by the base of the food chain, like the plankton, and they pass the chemicals, they bioaccumulate up through the food chain from plankton all the way to humans and other larger mammals. Yeah. I had no idea. Mm. That's... Yeah, so the fish that, if you eat fish, or, you know, it could, you may not see the plastic, but it could contain the chemicals that we've actually put in the ocean into the fish. Right, so this is why plastic bags aren't just harmful to sea turtles, but they're also harmful to whales. They ingest the whole bag. They're harmful to the plankton, the fish, and even ourselves. If, if humans are eating fish, they're getting those chemicals in their food. Well, do we know how those chemicals are getting in the ocean? Well, with the DDT and DDE, it was actually banned in, I think, 1972 in the US, but it's still used in developing countries to control malaria. And also, the reason it's called persistent organic pollutant, by the way, don't see that word organic as being good, <laughs> um, is because it stays in the ocean, it stays in the environment. You can't get rid of that stuff. So even though it was banned in 1972, it's still out in the ocean. So it's accumulating onto the plastic. Wow. Well, on that cheery note, we're going to take <laughs> a little break and then come back. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day.
Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas and with me today is Suzanne Frazier and Dean Otsuki of BEACH, which I forget yet. It's an acronym for... Yeah, BEACH Environmental Awareness Campaign Hawaii. Oh, you put it on your t-shirts. I should have looked. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's really handy. <laughs> so we're talking about um, the city and county of Honolulu. The derelict county has not been able to get its stuff together to pass a, a decent bag ban, but now, Bill 52. Nine. Nine, Nine. 59, 59. Um, CD2, it's mm -hmm. got two FD versions, floor draft versions, mm -hmm. one and two. Mm -hmm. So when, so those have both been voted on. And no, the um, FD1 is the current version of the bill. Yes. The FD2 is a proposed version. Okay, so FD1 mm -hmm. um, was voted on last uh, month. Last mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. And who voted for it? Uh, so who voted for it were um, council members Pine, Anderson, Manahan, and Elefonte. Do we Oh, sorry, which one did you ask FD1. about? FD1. Oh, scrap oh, because... that. Scrap that. Totally wrong. Okay, <laughs> who voted for FD1, yes. right? Yes. The floor draft one. Okay, Martin, Manor, Kobayashi, Ozawa, and Fukunaga. Right. Okay, and that's the one you don't want. Yes. Yes. Okay, so that one passed. Right. And then how did FD2 happen? Um, FD2 is a proposed version that was presented at the last council meeting. Um, oh, so complicated because at the last council meeting, it was actually, Carol Fukunaga's bill was actually called CD2, Committee Draft 2, and Elefante's um, proposed version was called Floor Draft 1. So she, her, her version had passed committee, and he walked into the council member, uh, he brought into the council meeting uh, a Floor Draft 1. But then, to trick things up, um, she walked in with a Floor Draft 1 as well. So there were two floor draft ones at the last meeting. And the council had to decide which one they were going to um, change the committee draft to. And they ended up voting for um, Carol Fukunaga's floor draft one. What happened, however, was that she only presented her floor draft that day. So it was under the 48 hours. And there's some sort of rule that if there's 48 hours, less than 48 hours, um, you have to have another vote to see if, you can, if that can be waived. And so when that vote was taken, four council members were objecting to waiving the 48-hour rule. So those four council members, sorry, I read their names before, are Pine, Anderson, Manahan, and Elefonte. So they were objecting because they support a plastic bag ban and they spoke very eloquently about why we need a plastic bag ban. And I was so heartened by that because previously there'd only been one or two council members supporting the bill, but um, now there were four. So um, again, those four are Pine, Manahan, Anderson. Anderson, and then the guy and who... Uh, Elefante. Uh, right. Elefante, Brandon. We bill. love Brandon. Yeah. Um, who's, who, who has really stepped up to the plate on this. Yes, and, he has. Because okay. the original bill is his bill, mm -hmm. but it went to Carol's committee, and, and she's made a lot of changes to that bill. So he's continuing to try to get a better version out there, and that's why he tried at the last council meeting to bring in a floor draft. However, his floor draft didn't get heard because she brought in a floor draft. So that's why hers is now called floor draft one, and he's trying again. So he's bringing in a floor draft two to try again. And it's on the agenda, so it will be heard. Well, it, it can be heard. It's up to, I mean, who knows? It could be the same thing happen where Carol might show up with a floor draft two and we'll be back to the same problem again, you know, of which one do they pick. But every meeting we've been to lately, um, Carol has brought in another version of the bill right on the day of the hearing without us being able to see it first. So would that kick in the 48-hour rule again? It I might, was... yes. Yeah. So what happens with the 48-hour rule that I found out was that 
um, if they're able to waive the 48-hour rule and if they're able to vote finally on that bill, they actually have to get, instead of a majority vote of five out of nine council members, they need six out of council, six out of nine to pass the bill. And because they had four people objecting last time, they didn't have six votes. And that's why it got held over to this month to be heard again. Okay, so the thing that people can do to really help make a substantive bill happen next week Yes. Is um, especially those people who are in areas that are represented by those who did not vote for Elefante's bill. Right. So again, mm -hmm. those are. Uh, oh, those are in the area of Mililani, Waikele. Well, just just oh. the names. Oh, of oh okay. The... Ron Manor's area, um, and Kobayashi, Trevor Azawa, Carol Fukunaga, and Ernest Martin. So just. Quickly, it's the North Shore, Mililani, the Kaimaki area in Palolo, the Hawaii area, and the um, Nuuanu, um, Kali'i area. So those are major areas on the island that really need to step up and call their council member, mm -hmm. tell them that they support a ban on plastic checkout bags, and would their council member please also support a ban on plastic checkout bags? Okay. That's and one thing they can do. That's they, one thing. They, they can, can also do online testimony that's open right now. And they can also testify in person down at the council hearing on the 7th of June. The meeting starts at 10, but guess what? The agenda is 45 pages long and Bill 59 is on page 35. So we're estimating, I'm just guesstimating, but maybe around 5 o'clock in the afternoon um, to head down there to Honolulu Harley. Uh, they've They've also been known to change the order. They have. Yes. That's why I said I'm <laughs> guesstimating. So best thing for people to do if they want to give um, verbal testimony, which we'd really love people to do, is to keep an eye on the proceedings on Olelo, or they can go online. It's um, broadcast live online. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. So, But in the meantime, they can submit testimony online, too. Yes. And yes. That, the information for that was on that, that uh, screen that we were just showing. Oh, right? it was? Oh, yes. yeah. good. I didn't see it. <laughs> there it is. Oh, yeah, there great. There it is again. Yes. Tell them to vote no on Bill 59 FD1 and yes for FD2. Perfect. Yeah. 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 It's very, it's, I, I haven't heard about this situation where you have two versions and it gets, I'm not terribly familiar with the council's mm. process. Anyway, well, I think anyone can bring in a proposed floor draft. Anyone can. Luckily, Elefonte's floor draft got put on the agenda. So, by putting it on the agenda several days ahead of the meeting, means that he will only need five votes. That means we're looking for just one more council mm -hmm. member. One more. Yes. Oh, come on. Maybe. Trevor, <laughs> my <laughs> council member. <laughs> He's our He's council good. member yeah, too. Yeah. So, with... so there's, you've got three votes right here, Trevor. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, and my gosh, when you think about the coastline involved in Trevor Ozawa's um, district, it's, it's well, it amazing. It runs from um, Waikiki all the way to Sandy Beach, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, mm. if there's ever a stretch of Hawaii's beach that that needs this. It's certainly, mm -hmm. certainly that. Definitely, yes. definitely. Yes. Okay, and we have, um, um, I, I don't know that we need to have any more reasons, but um, if, if you were gonna, in the last minute, um, say one more reason why it's really important for this bill. Well, we're a pass. little island in the middle of the Pacific surrounded by water with endangered and threatened species in it. And they include um, sea turtles, like the leatherback sea turtle that could go extinct in the next 10, 15 years. So we need to protect those marine animals. It's super important that the FD2 passes and that we get rid of plastic bags. Oh, thank you both for coming. That brings us to the end of another episode of Hawaii is My Mainland. I'm your host, Kawi Lucas. My guests have been Suzanne Fraser and Dean Otsuki. Learn more at www.b-e-a-c-h.org slash plastic bag ban Oahu.
Thanks to our production engineer, Robert McLean, our floor manager, Cindy Manufakai, and all the people who care and contribute to our ThinkTech productions. If you want to see or share this show, go to thinktechhawaii.com or youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii. There will be a link to more shows just like this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Aloha.